What's going on, team? Guess what? Darth Vader, Mitch, and Chris Ketchy. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up, everyone? Yeah, we got a great show today. Uh, Mitch, whether or not your voice sounds like Darth Vader, I mean, the, the news is the same, right? We're here to provide the news, the headlines, and the trade ideas for the SPAC world out there. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's smash that like. Let's get started. We got a lot of people here uh, ready to go. Um, what do you think, Mitch? Should we start with some headlines here? We'll definitely get into those headlines. Like, first things first, we got to start up the SPACs today. <laughs> What's going on, traders out there? Yes, it's Darth Vader Mitch here, but guess what? I got the Chrisopedia. That's all we need, man. What's going on, Chris? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's an exciting day out there. We got a lot of movers again, something we've been seeing, you know, all week with a lot of SPACs trading up, you know, 3%, 5%. We've got a couple double digit leaders today, too. And of course, we did have that deal yesterday, right, um, for uh, Black Rifle Coffee, and shares were up quite a bit in the early morning session. They did pull back, but they ended the day up 15%. So that was a nice, you know, one-day deal announcement move, something we're starting to see um, with SPACs. Yeah, you know, one thing that we're keeping an eye out for is what's going to happen? Is this the next wave? Is this... Is this just certain ones moving? I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, I, I myself, even in, in two of them that have been moving up today, uh, up one about 16%, up another, trying starting to see it curve at the bottom there. We'll see what happens. I mean, it, it's definitely an environment where we're getting back to this back game. And you need to know which ones are which so that you guys can get onto these before they run not after they run. Uh, Chris, I know that you have some headlines for us, so let's go ahead and take us back to those headlines, and then we'll get into the watch list and see what's out there and what's moving. All right, guys. Yeah, not a ton of, of headlines today, um, but let's get through them, and then you know we'll look at that watch list, and then we're going to get into some trade ideas as well. So the big news this morning, we had two uh, former SPACs announcing a partnership. So Embark is partnering with Luminar to accelerate the commercial SaaS autonomous truck deployment. So that ticker NGAB and LAZR right there on the screen. So the state-of-the-art LiDAR sensors will power Embark's autonomous trucking solution, enabling more advanced, safer self-driving for its commercial trucking platform. Um, this partnership gives Embark and its carriers partners access to Luminar's cutting-edge long-range LiDAR sensor. Embark is working on delivery of 14,200 non-binding truck reservations for 2024, so definitely something to keep an eye out on. Then we have uh, the news from Zillow, right? And we're going to get into this later in the trade ideas. So uh, Zillow announced that they are winding down their Zillow offer service and that they will be selling 7,000 houses, exiting that business line. Um, two former SPACs, Open Door, O-P-E-N, and OfferPad, O-P-A-D, are in that business. So those are two potential um, companies to watch that could benefit from Zillow exiting or they could also face some you know, headwinds with that industry maybe not being as positive as thought. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. And we do have a company that everyone should be uh, watching uh, right now. And by watching, I mean uh, you know, keeping an eye on but not watching their presentation because our show's on, of course. But Ivan, I-V-A-N, the CEO will be making an announcement um, anytime they started a presentation today at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Battery World for SES, which is the merger partner with this SPAC. Um, they said that they will be uh, announcing 
new electric vehicle lie metal cells. This is a battery play. I called this out earlier the week um, with BCRC and QS moving. We do have shares up 2% right now to 1050, um, but we will see what Ivan uh, partner SES has to say. And if you missed it, we actually interviewed SES on the show. That was definitely one to watch. If you, uh, you know, missed that, um, we'll, we'll drop that link in the chat later on, but keep an eye out on IVAN. Then we have Berkshire Gray, BGRY. I saw someone mention this one in the chat. They did have news today. They expanded the availability of their robotic e-commerce fulfillment solution. Um, so this is going to help retailers develop solutions that integrate the online and physical worlds of retail, um, which helps them fulfill online orders with their in-store inventory. So this is definitely a company to watch in the e-commerce space using artificial intelligence. They do have some big partners um, and deals. So uh, BGRY on watch with that news. Then uh, in the sports betting world, we got a New York sports betting update. So remember a couple months ago, I, I gave everyone the short list of the finalist for the New York licenses. And according to Ryan Butler, uh, formerly of the Action Network, he said that New York could announce as early as this week two groups for the online sports betting licenses. And, and those groups would include BallyBet, BetMGM, DraftKings, and FanDuel in one and then the second one consisting of Caesars, WinBet, uh, Resorts World, and Rush Street Interactive. So your SPACs to watch there, of course, are RSI for Rush Street, DKNG for DraftKings, and AUS, which is bringing WinBet public. And then speaking of DraftKings, DraftKings announced a strategic deal with iHeartMedia today. Um, so they become the official ad supplier for iHeartMedia Solutions in over 160 markets nationwide. Um, they will be able to co-create and distribute long-form content with iHeartMedia. Um, not a huge surprise here. DraftKings is dipping its toes further into the media markets. That's something I called out as a catalyst. They're not just going to be a sports betting play. They're also getting into media and content. Um, so keep an eye out on that deal. They do have earnings uh, later this week on Friday, and it will be one of the companies we talk about later on. And then Hyzon Motors, H-Y-Z-N, uh, th their partner, Hearinga Commerce Construction um, of Nationwide Green Hydrogen Refueling Network in New Zealand. So a refueling deal in New Zealand for Hyzon Motors. That is a hydrogen trucking play, um, one to possibly watch there. And then we haven't talked about uh, new SPACs lately, you know, that could be IPOing, but I saw one that definitely caught my eye, and I think it's going to catch a lot of people's eyes, and that is because Kevin Durant, NBA superstar and champion, is attaching his name to Infinite Acquisition Corp., a new SPAC that will seek to raise $200 million, selling 20 million units. Each unit will include one common share and one half of a warrant. Nice to see the half warrant size there. And this SPAC um, is a 50-50 partnership between 35 Ventures and Lion Tree. So 35 Ventures was co-founded by Durant and Rich Kleiman. Lion Tree is a leading investment and merchant bank. So 35 Ventures, if you're not familiar with them, they launched in 2016, and they have a good track record of investments. We talk about celebrities and athletes in the SPAC world. Um, you know, this is one who has a great track record of investments. So 35 Ventures invested in Postmates, which was acquired by Uber, uh, Acorns, Whoop, Overtime, Caffeine, Robinhood, and Coinbase. They also invested in the MLS team, Philadelphia Union, and they have Boardroom, which is a sports business media platform. If you don't know Rich Kleiman, prior to launching 35 Ventures, he launched Rock Nation Sports with Jay-Z, and he also was with Rock Nation as a music manager. 35 Ventures was also an investor on the pipe of the SPAC merger between Red Bull Acquisition, RBAC, and SeatGeek. Lion Tree 
has advised over $600 billion worth of deals since being launched in 2012. Um, in the SPAC industry, they've been an advisor on several mergers, including 23andMe and Hims and Hers. So the SPAC is going to target sports, health and wellness, food tech and supply, e-commerce, and crypto and digital assets. Those are the areas they're specifically focusing on. And, you know, obviously Durant getting involved with a sports company would be a big deal, but I really like the highlight of crypto in the prospectus. So it highlights the rise of platforms like Coinbase, Kraken, and BlockFi. It also mentions Super Rare, Dapper Labs, Axie Infinity, Decentraland, So Rare, and NFTs. Um, again, Durant was an early investor in Coinbase in 2017. Um, I think maybe they go after the crypto market. So this will be a SPAC to watch. Again, not publicly traded yet, um, but we'll uh, be talking about this one in the future. And then turning to uh, some calendar information, we have DCRC, the battery play merging with Solid Power. They announced that their merger vote will be on December 7th. That's the first December date that I know of. And then a couple merger votes from this week. We had SWBK, BK approving their deal with Bird, 67% of shares redeemed, which makes this around a $10 million or a 10 million share float. So SWBK on watch. Uh, RTPY approved with Aurora. They had 77% of shares redeemed. MOTN, 60% of shares redeemed on the .go deal. Um, and KVSB next door deal approved, and they had 7.4% of shares redeemed. So those are all ones to watch with the redemption trade. And then we do have earnings tomorrow from Nikola, MP Materials, Velodyne, PAE, and Blue Owl Capital. And then as I mentioned yesterday's leader, SBEA on the Black Rifle Coffee deal, Shares were up 15% yesterday. They're down around 8% today. And have to note that they saw 99.2 million shares of volume yesterday. Um, that's a big volume leader, right, for SBEA. Your next highest yesterday was 17 million for DWAC, of course, the Donald Trump SPAC. Um, that's what I've got, Mitch. Uh, you know, I, I said it wasn't a ton of headlines, but now reading through it, it actually seems like a decent amount. But what do you think? Kevin Durant uh, getting into the SPAC game. I mean, those are some pretty big companies he's invested in before. Uh, it also was mentioned in the prospectus that he did spend some time with the Golden State Warriors, which is uh, coincidentally right next to Silicon Valley, where a lot of these tech startups, uh, you know, uh, are headquartered. So what do you think? Does Durant land a good deal here in the future? I mean, it, it's not something to kind of judge celebrities and athletes and these specs. But one thing that I've talked about is that at the end of the day, when you're an athlete, you get you get like insight. And, and a lot of times your friends are some higher up people right like you're talking to investment bankers you're talking to lawyers doctors those are the usually the people that you know these athletes are going to talk to and they're going to go ahead and get use those insights to lean them into their investments i think that that's what happened here i'm sure someone talked to durant in the last six months or year about SPACs told them how this could be something that you could use to take a company public and be part and, and and not only take part, but be, you know, high on a board that you could start getting into this investment type of game. I think Durant is seeing how certain athletes have done, like, let's say the key member Shaq, you know, how we've been seeing Shaq really take it to the next level in investing. And that's his focus now. I think that's what Durant is looking forward to in retirement. He's already starting to look forward towards that. So he's starting to dip his toes and in making investments. And this is something to pay attention to because I think Durant is going to talk to the right people to at least get him into a position that could potentially go up. Yeah, I mean, you know, you mentioned Shaq, right? We've talked about celebrities, athletes getting into SPACs, also making investments, right? Uh you know, we even saw that uh, this week, right, with uh, Coca-Cola acquiring the rest of Body Armor. 
that was an early investment from the late Kobe Bryant, right? And his family got a nice payout this week, you know, as part of that deal. So these athletes, a lot of times they're investing in companies, you know, that they use their products or that they know and they see the growth there. So I really like Durant here getting into the SPAC game. And again, I, I really like the highlight of crypto, right? Not just an athlete going after, you know, a sports team, a sports company, or a, you know, a health and wellness brand. The fact that crypto is mentioned right there in the prospectus, you know, gets me excited as we look for more crypto names in the industry. Um, but yeah, so uh, a lot of headlines again, Mitch. Um, but uh, should we uh, should we jump to the watch list today? I know we've got uh, quite a few movers out there. All right, but before we jump into the watch list, I did see you bring up a headline that did interest me. Um, was the update from uh, DKNG about going into media? Um, and so, one thing that I've talked about is there's a name that I've talked about that I think did this very well, it, and that was Bally Sports. Um, why I like Bally is because what they did was they went after the media side first, nailed that down, Chris, gave themselves an ability to be what? Present on your TV, right? When you turn anything that used to be a Fox Sports Network type of, of sports, now what is it? It's a Bally Sports stream. And what does that do? That gives the brand recognition to the next level. Then they started dipping their toes into sports betting. DKNG going about this now, reverse, right? They did the sports betting, and now they're dipping their toes into the media. Why are they doing that? Because they realize what is important is being front and center to the consumer that's watching the sports because that's how you go ahead and you get your name out there to the people that are going to be doing the sports betting. And so it's very important to see that on the TV, match the branding, and then you'll go and look for that brand when you go for the sports betting play. I think that's what DKNG is starting to step in here. That's what Bally's thought about first. They said, well, we don't have the brand name to step up and compete with DraftKings, FanDuel, and Penn, and Barstool Sports. But what we can do is take the media underneath, diversify, and give ourselves an ability to battle in this industry. Yeah, and I mean, you, you mentioned Barstool right there as well. You know, <laughs> Barstool built up their media brand and then got into sports betting through the partnership with Penn National. Also, we're seeing Fubo, right, work into that as well, starting as the, the media company, the streaming platform, and going to launch sports betting later this year. And, and then also ESPN, right, Mitch? There's the rumor that ESPN wants in the sports betting game, and obviously, they have a big brand, right? A well-known brand. And, you know, with that, they're going to be able to bring customers to whatever sports betting platform they launch, right? Whether it's their own or whether they partner with someone. Um, so definitely, uh, yeah, an interesting topic. And with that being said, There's some of these uh, sports betting companies might fall behind, right? If you don't have the, the media deals and partnerships. It's something to talk about because it gives them diversification, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we want to hear from these. We don't want them to be in only one kind of area. And then that causes them not to have that outlook. Um, and now one thing that's being mentioned in the chat that Kathy Woods has been buying DKNG. I, I like it here too. I mean, but like always, you got to determine your own risk and return. Now, one thing that I will state is that for me, when you think about these sports, one of the ones that I'm looking to continue seeing is the one that was mentioned in a rumor with RSI, but never coming out is Fanatics. Fanatics is going to start dipping their toes into this. So look for a potential buyout, whether it be RSI or another stock that I'm looking at to potentially get it bought out too, Chris, is actually GAN. I actually could see GAN being a, a target for acquisition because of their tech stack. That's what we're looking for here. Look for companies that have that tech stack. Those are going to be the ones that are going to be acquired because they just don't maybe have the brand recognition and market uh, market share right now, but they do have the technology, and that's why they're targets. All right, let's move forward. Let's get into the watch list. I just wanted to take a second there. I think it's so important. You know, this one thing that I focused on in the beginning was the media side of sports betting and how that really comes into play. If you look at it, we're 
we're a media driven society, right, Chris? We're driven by the shows we watch and how we that literally drives the consumer. The content that you watch now, a lot of that is how you go and make purchases. And so I think this is going to be a lot of what you're going to see in the sports betting world is maybe even someone competing with ESPN. Could it really be? I think they're going to see it. You're going to definitely see it. That's why ESPN is concerned. That's why they want to get into sports betting. So you got to stay up with the times. If not, the times run yeah, you, you fall over. behind, right? That's That's exactly what happens. All right, let's go to the watch list, see what's out there. If you guys got a spec that has been moving this week or today, please mention it in the chat. We'll go ahead and touch some of these. Then we got the November calendar. This is, I think, the best thing that Chris does for us is give us all these dates that we need to keep on watch. So stay tuned for that. Hit the thumbs up, and let's get the watch list going. All right, traders. Uh, starting to see that skills is up 9%. We also got ZEV moving, Lightning E-Motors. Chris, what are you thinking about ZEV? Is there news on this, or is this kind of more of the EV play catching up? So ZEV had news yesterday Ooh. on that partnership with Siemens for the Level 2 charging stations. But, Mitch, that's surprising because yesterday – we didn't actually see that big of a move on that headline. And now today we're, we're getting the, the big move. So uh, this could just be an EV sector play, right? But I did like that partnership with Siemens yesterday, the level two chargers. Um, ZEV has had some big runs over the past couple months. It's a high flyer. So uh, we'll definitely be watching that one. But yeah, I'm not seeing headlines today. Um, but that was the big one yesterday. And surprise, surprise, Mitch. They do have earnings this month, right? So many of these SPACs what? with earnings. So I'm seeing a date of November 15th uh, for earnings. So ZEB on watch all month long. All right, let's get back to it. I'm having some a little bit issues with my pro charts. I don't want them to struggle on us. So I pulled up my other charting service here, uh, TC. As you guys can see, ZEV really getting off of that $8 to $7.50 area. Now getting strong through 850s. I do like that look. You could hold off of that 850. And let's see if ZEV can make it back up to 10 and then go sideways there. We know how we like that. Last drive brought us to 12. Let's see what happens now. All right, going to go into the next one. Of course, skills is up at the top. We could take a look at that. I, I, I mean, I, I know I saw some analysts being mentioned. I know they changed on over. Um, Chris, do you think this is the reversal of time in skills, or do you think they're going to run into some trouble here? Uh, I mean, I, I heard Dennis talk about it today, right, on pre-market prep, the Activision earnings mm -hmm. yesterday. The earnings were good, but their guidance disappointed. They pulled some games, um, the timelines. But the fact that Activision beat, um, you know, could be a positive for the gaming sector. But for me, skills still, where's the NFL game, right? That's the big question we've had. They do report tonight after the bell. Um, looks like someone mentioning that in the chat as well. Mitch, what do you think it would take for, for them on this earnings? Is, is it going to be about those past earnings? Or even if they give us an update on the NFL game and also highlight the new executive that they hired from Amazon, could guidance be enough to really you know propel this thing higher? And I, I don't feel like earnings are really going to matter. I think it's going to be all about the the forward-looking comments from them. What do you think? Yeah, this is one that I, I, I feel like everyone just completely loved it right out the gates. They were like, skills, skills, skills. That's all I heard about when it came out. But I still yet to see the story match the hype. That's what I would say. Until that moment... I'm not touching the skills. I wanted it at 10. Maybe should have taken that at 10. Would have risked down to $8. I don't know. Probably would have got stopped out. I'll be honest. Um, so to me, at this point, I'm just going to stay off until I feel that the hype matches the story and the technicals also match. Yeah. I mean, I tested their platform, Mitch. I did some of the games and I'm not playing them anymore, right? They, they didn't do enough to keep me engaged. They they weren't strong enough games, yeah. and I think that's the big thing here, right? Give me an NFL game, right? Mitch, we could both download that NFL game. 
we could wage your money against each other, play against each other. Like that would keep me entertained, right? That would keep me coming back. But doing some of these you other games, I, think it is I just, I'm not as excited. Let, let's be honest. Football games are hard to yeah. make, right? Madden is yeah. Not even an easy Madden thing didn't do as well on mobile, right? It was really. I mean, I tried that too, and that that was kind of out there. That should show you, right? If Madden, that title, can do good on a mobile game, it, it just might seem that, at least for right now, mobile game, maybe the sports games are a little bit difficult, especially something that's compl complex like football. Multiple routes, you have to be able to see, and, and spacing and stuff like that, you really in-depth view. I think this is where Scales is struggling. Maybe that NFL game that was made, wasn't as good as they thought it was going to be. So they had to pull the plug. That's why they haven't mentioned it. That's why they don't talk about it. That's why they keep quiet about it because they had to pull that plug and they're looking for the next driver. So look for the next driver. I, I would kick that NFL game to the side. I'm looking for the next one. What can they do to get me interested in maybe talk about some meta or something like that? We'll talk. We'll, we'll pay attention to it on the earnings call. Let's keep going. Next one up. The two that I am really happy to see moving up. Desktop metals, of course. I'm blowing desktop metals. But also QS. QS is one that I've been looking at for a while. So let's take a look at both of them really quickly. BM, beautiful day. Guess what, Chris? Look at my where my buy zone was. And it went right on top of it that's just how it goes sometimes guys i was looking for a pullback to 760s uh did get down towards 790s it didn't even go down towards the 780s so i wasn't able to get my ad back as i took some profit into this bar but now that we're above nine what do i do i don't add here i just let the position go i'm all the way down here so now at this point, I could just let the stock try to build and gain on the momentum. Yeah, I mean, desktop metal, right? I couldn't believe how low this thing got. And it's starting to come back to life. We, we could see the 3D printing industry come back. And Mitch, the one I would mention here, VLD, Velo 3D, is up 14% today. I want you to take a look at the one-month chart on VLD because this thing has been, you know, just a, a steady riser over the last month i mean we saw sideways action eight dollars and then once it started moving th this thing got higher and i will note of course kathy right kathy wood has been buying up a ton of shares of this company right and this is a a spacex supplier right and what do we know about spacex mitch you can't invest in spacex so the next best thing you can do is to find the companies partnered or working with SpaceX if you want exposure to SpaceX. So also, so they have space exposure. They have 3D printing exposure. I mean, I like VLD, and I mean, the, this chart's looking nice. What do you think? A little annoyed that I sold this one, Chris. <laughs> I ended up, I held this one for like four or five months. And it didn't do because anything. Because I believe so much on the name. You guys remember me. I, I, I'm a big proportion for this stock i mean and it's all about what chris just talked about that spacex relationship to me anything anything to do with spacex it's gonna do great when when companies like nasa give you the backing that they're giving spacex if you hear the comments that come out of nasa for the, that rocket they're just like yo where have you been all my life spacex that's how they're acting like so to me you have to look for some of these types of plays. And these, to me, are more generational plays than they are trades. Yes, you could be trading it right now, making a move from 10 to 12, and you could be that type of trader. But I I love these for a long-term investment. And that's what one thing that we talked about with Velo was that it was going to take a little while, but that we could see the upside, especially with relationships like in space, like SpaceX. All right, so catching up with the chat, uh, Cole, uh, yes, I am long, just to confirm you on that. You asked if I'm long DM. Yes, I am long DM. I'm not long QS, but I did I did push on my man Carl in the chat to buy it. <laughs> well, that's my friend right there. I don't, I don't know if he's still long it, but QS looking great, 
Chris. What are you thinking about this now? Yeah, I mean, QS, I I, I feel like at some point we're going to get a pullback, right? I mean, I, I think the under $20 right around that mark was the time to get in this one. Um, you, you know, there's still years away from really launching this. So, you know, I think it's going to move on news. But ultimately, you know, there's no revenue. There's no earnings. Um, but it is getting a lot of uh, mentions, you know, across uh, social media and FinTwit. You know, I, I'm actually trying to catch up with the Ivan news, right? So the the headline I said was Ivan, I-V-A-N, um, their merger partner, SES, had a presentation today and they announced a new Lice uh, battery. And again, I, I think maybe the rotation could come, right? QS already had the run. Ivan's trading at like 1060, I think, today. So I, I feel like that one could see a, a move. So to me, I would be going after the one that hasn't had the move versus the one that already had the, the move. Yeah, the, the way that I think about QS is that it falls in line with Lucid to me. It falls in line with Lucid because it had that type of, let's say, retail attention when it was up there towards 120. And then it dropped down and did what? A super long sideways trend that it's trying to break out of. Of course, it needs to get into kind of the 35s and 40s to really show us that, hey, it's really starting to do that move back up to the gap up. But there's an actual huge gap. It's up here by the 80s and 90s. If it ever gets into that area, I mean, this is a huge risk and return from here. And so that's why I've been looking at QS and thinking that it would come back. As we see, it's been doing great. One of the things that I'd point out is the volume that popped it up. And then it came back down to support, back down, back down, break out. Now, the big thing for me now is just for it to hold 27 on pullbacks. If it can hold this 27 on pullbacks, I think you're still looking at a bullish uh, QS. And you could still play this. This is more a momentum, I think, than like Chris is talking about, than actual, let's say, revenue or expectations being met. But more along just momentum in the name. And I could see it continuing. But like Chris said, you could get a pullback in this one. So, of course, do your research, guys. Uh, Framer is saying something. Well, he'll probably flip on that tomorrow, guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'll call it out right now, Mitch, because we talk about SoFi, right? SoFi, they're probably going to get a bank charter at some point. They're also offering early access to um, the Rivian IPO. So SoFi's uh, CEO, Anthony Noto, used to work at Goldman Sachs, which is where Jim Cramer used to work. They're, they're buddies. So he's been on the show before. So Kramer hates on SPACs, but I would guess in a week or two, he'll be all over SoFi he'll again, forgetting that SoFi went public via SPAC. So, I mean, I mean, you can either do what we say, right, where you say there's going to be winners and losers in the SPAC market. You can't say that all SPACs are losers and then talk about a SPAC and say it's a winner. You, you can't. It doesn't make sense, right? It's a contradiction. Yeah, uh, let's just say the one thing that I don't like doing is flipping on my story. And at least one of the things that you will hear from me is when I do flip, a lot of the times, what do I do? I admit it. I flip my position and I'm no longer seeing the story the way I did. This is the one thing that I would knock on Kramer that he doesn't do well on. He doesn't go back and said that, hey, I was long and now I've changed my opinion. What he does is just state the changed opinion. And that doesn't give you the outlook that you need because, I mean, if you're just going to change your opinion all the time, then why would anybody just listen, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. That's why here on SPACs, you'll hear Chris and I make opinions, right, on, on how we feel on certain stocks, but we also will point to the opposite look and how that could be against, like Chris right now talking about how, yeah, QS looks great, it looks awesome, but at the same time, where's the revenue, where's the catalyst, where's the movement? That's what we're about here. That's what we want to be different than CNBC and not just try to get you guys, oh, yeah, bye, 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 bye. I mean, I, I, I could say that a million times, but that doesn't help anybody. We want you guys to learn from the way that we go about it. And that's what it's all about. So smash that thumbs up. Let's keep it going in the watch list here. I want to go to two more, and then we're going to go into our November, oh, 
November calendar here. Anyone that stands out to you, Chris? Um, I'm wondering if you can pull up the Ivan chart again. I I'm seeing nice yeah, volume coming in. Um, we're up 3% right now. Again, that battery event is happening right now while we're live on this show. So I haven't had a time to see exactly what, but they unveiled a new battery. And if you remember when we had them on, this is a company that has partnerships and investments from General Motors and Hyundai. Um, they could be a big player in the battery space. And they are actually saying that their batteries are better than their competition. Um, and I mean, based on the volume and the, the shares moving, I, I'm guessing that this event went over well today. And I saw a 52 week high of 11, uh, 10 and we're at 1060 right now. There's a chance that we could see a new 52 week high today. I mean, this is one that didn't really pop on the deal announcement, right? Getting as high as 11. Um, I, I could see it breaking out and hitting new all-time highs today. So Ivan definitely on my watch. I kind of wish I would have gotten into this one before the event. Um, we did have a headline on Benzinga Pro. If you had Benzinga Pro, you saw that headline that I helped, uh, you know, get out there to people that this battery event was happening. Um, and you were able to catch this move, but, uh, definitely on, on my watch. What do you think, Mitch, that, that move we're seeing right now in, in Ivan? So to me, it's all about the 1050s holding. If you see every time that we went above 1050 on these spikes that were prior, we quickly went below it right here. Also, you can see it here, uh, July 9th, we spike and then we quickly go below at 1060. So now 1050s on pullbacks is what's important. As long as it can hold that 1050 on pullbacks, I'd be looking for this to continue in the bullish state. And as long as it can hold that, then, I mean, it could continue making a move up. Uh, one thing I do like is that it did go sideways for so long. We're talking about uh, 8.1 months. So from February 26th all the way until October 29th, it pretty much didn't do anything. Pretty much went sideways. And now that you're getting that momentum, now is when you want to go ahead and either have been in the stock or looking for pullbacks to get an, in and attack these. So to me, five ten uh, fifties on pullbacks. I take a shot on it and probably risk down towards this low, which is the ten thirties, and then give myself a what twenty cent stop out and looking for a move back up towards twelve. That's what I'd be looking for. That that'd be what uh, we're talking about a fifteen percent gain, uh, less than five percent risk, and not a bad trade setup there in Ivan. All right, Chris, that's probably going to do it for our watch list. Of course, I know that you guys are keep watching Lucid. Lucid did have a great day today. I talked about this on Money Mitch often, that it needs to trade in this one hour box. The one hour trade is really holding well. So if, as, long as, as long as this one hour chart continues in the bullish sense, I'm going to be still bullish on Lucid for right now. That number really on the downside is 33. We don't want to see 33 break down. We want it to continue in this sideways trend, then get right back up. It will give us the momentum to get on through the 40s and 50s and maybe make a move towards 60. We'll see what happens in Lucid. And the last one to also mention, because I wanted to get to it just to make sure, is BKKT. We've been seeing this monster. It's pulling back right now towards what? A prior resistance becoming a support. When I have these hour-long sideways trend, I actually look for the upside move, not the downside move. So I don't see it wrong if you risk off of, let's say, 35s or 3490s here and trying to get this BKKT, which was a rocket. But of course, always know you're out and be careful out there. This is the rocket. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into what everyone needs to know is the calendar dates merger votes when are the earnings coming this is what we go to chris the most because guess what that's the chrisopedia he has it all up here i don't know how because i can't get it like that but chris let us know what's going on in the merging calendars out there in this back industry in november all right guys yeah so november we we've got a calendar set right and we have a ton of earnings from former SPACs. We also have a decent amount of merger votes and several of them took place already this week. So on November 2nd, we got merger votes for MOTN with Ambulance, now known as .go, uh, SWBK, their merger vote with Bird, 
uh, KVSB merger vote with Nextdoor and RTPY, their merger vote with Aurora. And then next week, we get NGAB merger vote with Embark on November 9th. That's the autonomous trucking company. And then also a vote next week, DFPH, their vote with the Oncology Institute on November 12th. And then the following week, we'll have VOSO merging with Weijo uh, on the 16th, KVSA voting on their merger with Valo Health on the 16th, and on the 16th, LII merger vote with Local Bounty. On November 18th, we get FORE voting on their merger with P3 Health Partners and DDMX voting on their merger with DARE. And then rounding out the calendar on November 23rd, THMA voting on their merger with Pair Therapeutic. So that's what we've got for merger votes in November. I may have missed some. I'm sure the chat will let me know. Those were the ones that I had on my calendar. And then turning to earnings, I mean, this is a huge, huge month for earnings from, from SPAC. can't stress that enough, right? And especially with SPACs being hot, people getting back into former SPACs, th this is the time that could really shine on this industry and these great companies that went public via SPAC. So starting off tomorrow, we have uh, Nicola, MP Materials, Velodyne, PAE and Blue Owl Capital. And the big one for me is MP Materials. You know, they got that short report out and, and they said that they will they will issue their earnings on the 4th and they will issue a response to that short report. So MP Materials is definitely the one, um, you know, that I have my eyes on tomorrow. Um, I expect strong earnings from them. I also expect a strong response to that short report. Um, but we will see again if they disappoint with earnings or if they can't, you know, rebuttal against all the short issues. We could see a bit of a downtrend. Um, you know, this one has actually fared, uh, you know, pretty strongly since that short report and came back to life. So uh, MP, the big one I'm watching tomorrow. And then on Friday, of course, DraftKings, um, DKNG. Uh, Mitch, I mean, DraftKings, we, we talk about sports betting, and the thing that I saw yesterday, um, FanDuel parent company Flutter Entertainment, they said that every Sunday right now during the NFL season is like Super Bowl 2021 for them in terms of betting handle. That is a strong statement and makes me think that these sports betting companies I mean, have a strong couple months during the NFL season ahead of them. I mean, did you did you see that from from Flutter? What a comment! I mean, the Super Bowl is like the ultimate event, and now that's happening every Sunday. Literally, uh, but definitely, guys. I want to hear here. Uh, let's take a little poll here. You guys, press one in the chat if you've taken a sports bet in the last year. So from, let's say, uh, November of 2020 until right now, November, have you taken any sports bet? I would love to hear the chat. I'm definitely a one. I'm a one. I put a one in the chat. I, I'm more like 100. Yeah. But... I can only hit one one time, I guess. But uh... <laughs> but definitely, I wanted to see that because that, that tells us, right, Chris, the, the consumers, we can learn from our chat. How is it for our chat? Is there anybody that didn't take a bet? I would love to hear that. You know what I mean? Put the two if you didn't take a bet or put a three if you're not the betting type. That could be an, also a thing. So, hey, I'll tell you one thing. You guys know I'm a degenerate gambler. <laughs> I can't help myself on the weekends, Chris. I can't do I know, it. and yeah, you got you got Kindred Duke in the chat saying love them teasers. I mean, yeah, there, there's promo money. There's teasers. There's... All kinds of ways, you know. Uh, oh, we do have some twos, and we've got a three. Um, oh. I, I'm curious if the people putting twos and threes, you know, are, are do you just not like sports betting? Which, again, nothing wrong with that. Or are some of you in states that haven't legalized yet? Um, so if anyone out there is in a state like New York that hasn't fully legalized, uh, let us know in what state is it. I'm surprised to see so many twos. You know, to tell you the truth, I, I thought I was going to see less. Now, one thing I will say, and for you guys that are twos, look into the all the free money out there. 
just gonna give you a little tip. You could maybe be using that for different reasons. Pull like me, try to get as much free money as you can. With a hand it out, I'll take it. <laughs> Let's just say that. Let's keep going, guys. Let's get into some other ones. I know that we got stuck there on DKNG, but the, the chat loved it. You could tell. Uh, don't have time. <laughs> One guy said I'm a bookie. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess that's why. <laughs> Rockstar will stay away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. But, yeah, I, you got Canada here, Cali being mentioned, Washington, Ohio. Uh, Ohio's close, I think. I think. Ohio's getting closer. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, and options to prosper in the chat, how to get free money. So if you're in a state that has legalized sports betting, uh, look up sports betting promotions, and uh, you will find – articles and promotions on you know the these sports so betting companies <laughs> you know offering free money right and some of them give you free money some of them it's a sign up bonus what? right if you deposit twenty five dollars you get you get you know twenty five for free um Caesars right gave away NFL jerseys Jersey? Uh, there oh, it is right here to people that bet a hundred dollars um hundred and fifty dollar jersey I'll take it yeah Right, Chris? We weren't going to miss out on that deal. Yeah. I, Were you I able mean, to get your jersey yet? Uh, not yet. I haven't gotten it yet. So, oh, But I, I did bet with Caesars. So We got to get it. Yeah. That's what it's about. I mean, hey, free money is free money. If you guys want to know a little bit more about that type of thing, hit us up in the comments after. We actually have some money articles that could probably help you find these promos. So we want to help you guys. Just hit it up in the comments after, and I'll make sure to reply with specifically those articles that can find you those free betting promos. Let's go ahead. Let's keep moving forward. What's up next? Yeah, and then, I mean, Mitch, next week is shaping up to be a huge one, too. We have Clover Health on November 8th, CLOV, and Clover, of course, is a popular retail trader stock. Um, our CEO, Jason Rasnick, actually recently interviewed the CEO of Clove. Um, and, you know, that is one where, again, they've had several uh, partnerships, Medicare deals signed. And will that be reflected in their earnings? Definitely one to watch. Also, car lots next week on the 8th. We, we saw the run that car got, right? C-A-R with Avis, right? And, and car lots was a sympathy playoff of that yesterday. But the last time they reported earnings, their earnings were not very strong, right? They said that one of their key suppliers, um, that was hurting their business. So I would look to see what Lots has to say, um, because that could be a runner based on the car move, or it could be a huge decliner if they're still seeing the supply issues. On November 10th, we have a huge day, right? We have um, earnings from, I mean, some of the biggest ones out there. We've got 23andMe, we've got Proterra, we've got Hims and Hers, App Harvest, uh, Hylion, BarkBox, SoFi, Tattooed Chef. And, and then the two I would mention, Mitch, we talked about them in headlines, Open Door, O-P-E-N and OPAD, O-P-A-D. They both report earnings on November 10th. And you heard me say the headline, right, was that Zillow Zillow is getting out of the home buying and selling. So this could mean two things, right? It could either mean that that industry is so tough and open and OPAD, you know, it may hurt them, right? As that industry sees some, some headwinds, or it could mean that they see a positive because Zillow, a competitor, is getting out of the market. We did see open shares up significantly last night on the Zillow news. They did pull back this morning, now up, though, on the day. Um, I think Open will be pretty vocal and honest about what this means for them. And I think we could see a lift in Open based on comments about Zillow. Mitch, what do you think, the, the Open and OPAD off of the Zillow news? I mean, is this a positive and negative or a, a TBD to be determined? You know, one thing that I'm going to be watching is just, you know, OPED really, to me, hasn't, like, brought that marketing, brought that drive, brought that name recognition. I know they're trying to get their business off the ground, and that's probably why, um, you know, they're just not trying to spend really heavily on marketing. I, myself, has gone after Razkov. 
<laughs> I can't get him on, guys. I've tried. So if you guys want to hit up Razkov and be like, yo, come on, Spax attack, man. We, they, they want you on. I myself have been going after this company for a while. Remember, Chris? I, this was one that I've talked about since the yeah, very long, beginning. A I long time. Um, you know, and with that being um, said, yeah, I mean, Raskoff, he's a well-known name and he's got good uh, history in the industry. But yeah, Offer Pad, I just don't think has that brand awareness. Uh, I think the big thing was Zillow thought that they had that brand awareness, right? Because people use their service, right? For, you know, <laughs> estimates on how much a house is worth. Well, then they decided they were going to buy and sell homes. But there also were some articles out there. And again, I don't know if they're true or not. And if you've seen these, Mitch, that they were, you know, kind of gaming their system and they were buying up a bunch of houses in neighborhoods at a time. And it was boosting the price that then they were able to, you know, flip them for a higher profit. And again, that's all speculation, but that could have hurt Zillow's brand in terms of selling. Um, but yeah, I'm really curious to see if Open Door, you know they're going to get asked about it in Q&A, right? What does Zillow's uh, exit mean for you? And I'm curious to hear if they address it in their prepared remarks or if they wait until Q&A. Yeah, we'll definitely pay attention to it. Uh, Chris, I don't know if we missed some. I think we might have skipped 11.9. Did we skip 11.9? Might have skipped 11.9. Uh, I just want to catch everybody. Oh, yeah. 11.9. There is a bunch on 11.9 as well. Let me touch those dates. There you go. I put them up right here. So we could touch those dates starting with NGAB. Oh, no, that's the vote here. Let me let me get it down here. Yep. So I'm seeing uh, Reservoir Media, Latch, Cano Health, Stem, Tabula, Catapult. Got it. KPLT could be one to watch, right? Buy now, pay later. A firm had, you know, strong earnings. And then mm -hmm. also Velo 3D, Mitch, they report yeah. on the ninth. VLD. Yeah, and this could be a run into the report also. Remember that. That could be a, a something that we're seeing. One that I liked that I think is going to come back, DMS with the earnings yep. down towards the bottom. It has a nice bottoming here to $6. This is a chart that actually was doing really well but has retraced massively over the last couple months. I think this one could pop back up over seven. We'll see what happens with the earnings. That's DMS, the Digital Media Solutions, and that's also on the ninth. All right, let's skip down now. Now we can go a little bit further. Uh, we can go into the 11th here. Yeah, 11. Let's touch some of those 11, dates. 11, another uh, decent sized day, right? We have Berkshire Gray, Lion Electric, Astra Space, Weed Maps, Luminar, um, so, you know, some big hitters there, right? And I, I, I like a lot of these. Lion Electric's the one that I own shares of, and I really want to hear an update, right, on their buses. How many did they make? How many did they deliver? And, and Weed Maps, right? We talked about Weed Maps at the Cannabis Conference. You know, uh, how is their business faring? Um, so I, I'll be really curious on this day to, to see what some of these companies have to say. And then also up on screen there on the 12th, backed reports. I mean, that's been a huge flyer, right? BKKT, are they going to give us enough information and earnings to justify the, the big move on that uh, partnership with Visa? Yeah, it's something definitely to watch. I, I see it keep holding. It still looks interesting to me there. Uh, maps, that chart looks interesting to me for swing traders. Uh, reason why you're seeing bottoming action multiple times and then you're seeing right now these levels all coexisting with 12 12 being a support there that's what you could go off of if it doesn't hold there of course it could come back down to 10 but we'll see how the earnings come out and maps and i think you could see some lift in the stock going into next year but we'll definitely keep on watch for maps as it is a technology leader in the cannabis industry. All right, let's keep going. What other ones we got on the list, Chris? Thanks, we're down towards the 15th of November. Yeah, and 11.15, another big hitter day, right? This one's been circled on my calendar, and I don't even think I have all the companies listed here, but the big ones, Rocket Lab, Beachbody, Desktop Metal, Butterfly Networks, and Lucid Group. I mean, huge, huge day for, for former SPACs. Uh, I own Lucid shares, of course. Rocket Lab is one I called out at the start of this month. I really like it in November. They have earnings and they have two launch windows opening this month. As we know, Doing beautiful. space stocks, beautiful right? Call. Space stocks move based on launch windows and launches. So 
to me, Rocket Lab is set up for success in November. The question is, you know, will they be successful with those launches or could they see a setback? They did have a failed launch before, um, which we saw shares fall on, but uh, I'm liking that one. So uh, November 15th, a big day. DM almost to nine today, Chris. Nine would put me up about 20% on the name. Uh, so those people that keeps talking about how you can't make returns in specs, let me just say that uh, it's all about the right timing. If you don't time it right, then yeah, you're probably going to get caught holding a bag. But if you're smart, you'll cut that bag and wait for the stock to come back and you'll be able to make your gain on it. And and, and this is why I talk about how you always got to know when to cut it and then know when the stock's coming back, give yourself an opportunity. What did I do in DM? I gave myself like three weeks at 765 and was ready to add to the position because it wasn't a full position. I only took a third of my full position and was looking to add if it went down to 665, if it went down to 565. And this is the approach that I took that I think helped me get through that time when it did click down to 675, but then right back up through that level. And so this is how I like to attack these, especially if you're trying to catch the bottom. Uh, we'll see if these can continue to move. Another one that I tried to catch the bottom is body. I'm in this one at like 528, guys. I've been building up the position. I've actually added to the position once. Why? Because I keep seeing bottoming action near the same level, 515s, 525s. So that's why I'm adding down there. I'm trying to keep my average somewhere in this area, but at the same time, I don't mind adding because it's looking strong, especially if we can get back towards six and then the earnings come out or the Mayo, uh, the Mayo bike releases some kind of stats that can instantly have this one right back up there. So I'm taking my shot and body. We'll see what happens with this one. And last one that I'd leave off with is B fly. B fly is an interesting one because it's come out of the headlines. And I think this is the times when you could get an opportunity to get into a stock that has a huge potential upside, not only for the stock itself, but also for uh, kind of humanity within itself. I mean, BeeFly is an interesting product. It could be used in space. It was used on SpaceX. So, I mean, if it can be used in space, at least I think the, the functionality of there exists. Right, Chris? So yeah, definitely. I'm going to be watching this one. I like the bottoming action, multiple bottoms. What do we always talk about? Three or four bottoms. This is one I actually might swing trade into, and that's B-Fly. All right, Chris, that's going to do it for our calendar. We're at 12.02, and up next, you guys got an interview from Fun. Yes, I said it. You might have some fun. If you don't know the meme of that, Go ahead and check it out on the Power Hour coming up next. Chris, anything else you want to leave off with before we get on out of no, here? No, I think that's it. Uh, you know, uh, thanks, everyone. A nice, lively chat today with some great call-outs on tickers. And, you know, the November calendar, pay attention. Um, you know, some big catalysts coming for, for these SPACs. All right, like always, guys, I saw a lot of people join our stream as the stream continued on. We started with about 100, now have about almost 300 viewers. So if you guys could do us a favor, please smash that like and support SPAC's attack. Because at the end of the day, if you don't, we won't be around forever. If you guys got to go ahead and support the industries that you guys want to see continued being covered right here on Benzinga, which is the SPAC game. So give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time on the SPACs attack. And up next, you guys will get an interview from fun. And of course, when the hype meets the stock in the power hour, let's go ahead and get you guys over. We'll see you next time.